Today we are talking about my workout plan and my diet and my mental and how specifically I got into this pattern to lose almost 100 pounds in less than six months. Uh, for those of you guys who have been on my channel for a long time, I'm sure you guys have had the pleasure watching me continue to transform and look like a completely different person uh, since last September. If you guys haven't been here, then you guys can go back to like my September videos and look at my fat ass uh, a little bit ago. Okay. Um, now I wanted to address this because um, I've been getting, I still been getting a lot of questions as to get into specifics of how I did it. Um, so there's a couple of things that I want to talk about here and it's really, really important. Because, um, as I mentioned in my previous video, um, I've fallen into uh, several traps before in trying to get back in shape uh, with like trying crazy workout plans, you know, working out six days a week, crazy days a week, listening to motivational videos and and all, all kinds of gibberish uh, that had me feeling like if I wasn't running around like David Goggins and I was doing it wrong. OK, and I couldn't get results. OK, so let me just say the difference is this. It is OK to be weak. It is not OK to choose to stay weak. And with that being said, all strength is relative to what it is that you want to do for yourself, not for anybody else, just for you. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to share my experience and things that I've decided to do based on things that I have done in the past and what I found works for me. This is not a workout recommendation. This is not you should do what I do to find success. This is just what I did to work for me. And I invite you guys to try different things and see what works for you because that's what you'll do for the longevity. All right. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into this. Um, when I started this journey, I was 297 pounds. Um, I didn't get into fitness at all um, because in my mind I was making excuses and I told myself that all I had to do was change my diet and I would lose weight. Um, I, of course, like I usually do, switched to something extremely radical, which was a uh, carnivore at the time. And uh, so I switched to carnivore. I lost 20 pounds in like a week. It was crazy. I don't, I don't even know what happened, but I, in my mind, I was like, I don't have to do anything, right? Obviously, the weight loss stopped. Um, I plateaued like immediately. I didn't lose any more weight, but um, obviously, I, I, I didn't. I probably didn't give it enough time. Um, but after about 30 days, I decided it was time to work out. Now, in terms of like my specific diet when I was carnivore, it was literally just meat. <laughs> that's it some uh zero carb uh you know cheeses obviously um i didn't you know no american cheese i was doing like cheddar cheese mostly and like you know swiss some gouda here and there and uh mostly just meat bacon beef you know the whole the whole shebang no seasoning plain as day boring as hell what i did discover during this period though uh was when i was on carnivore i think carnivore really helped me get over my cravings uh the first two weeks were really really difficult because i uh, wanted to eat snacks and I wanted to go overboard and I wanted to go crazy. Um, but after my body kind of acclimated to just eating fat and protein basically all day, well, not really all day because I was intermittent fasting, but within, you know, the four to six hours I was, I was eating, I was fine. And, um, oddly enough, I stopped craving junk food, right? And I can say that this made it exponentially easier. Now, the problem, the first problem that I ran into, though, is when I started getting into the gym. Um, so when I thought about working out, like I told you guys before, um, I was really fat, right? So I couldn't do pull-ups. Um, I could do a few push-ups, maybe. And obviously, I could do some squats, you know, and that wasn't that wasn't really a big deal. So I I started where I could. And... This was really hard for me. It was really difficult for me because I used to train a lot. You know, I've been through a lot of, you know, gain weight, lose weight phases in my life. And be because I had such an addiction to food because of a fear of abandonment that I had, um, it was like food was the only thing in my life that I knew wouldn't leave. Right. So it was something that I had to cope with and deal with for me to move forward. So from this, I noticed that when I started to exercise, when I first started, I went for a walk and what I, what I wanted to do is use something in, you know, in, in the physical training world called progressive overload, where you just kind of start small and you slowly work up over time 
Um, but this time without trying to work myself into oblivion, right? Because I asked myself, I said, do I need to squat 600 pounds? No. Do I need to deadlift 700 pounds? No. So who am I trying to impress? Nobody, right? I just need to impress me. I want to look good when I look in the mirror. That's it. So from this, um, I wanted to adopt a new mindset of celebrating my weaknesses. And this was probably the hardest thing that I've experienced through this journey uh, over the past six months is, is giving myself credit. It is so extremely weird to celebrate things that in my mind weren't good enough to celebrate, right? So in my head, I'm like, if I flew to, if I got on a spaceship with no training and I flew to Mars, then I could give myself credit. But if it was anything less than that, then I could never tell myself that I was good enough, right? So this time it had to be a major paradigm shift, right? Major mindset change. So going into the gym, it was like, okay, uh, well, not even at the gym yet, but going for a walk. When I, when I first went for a walk, I, I did like a quarter mile and I was ready to die, literally ready to die. Okay. Um, so then after I walked a quarter mile, I was like, okay, I did a quarter mile. My daughter, bless her heart. She walked with me. Um, I was huffing and puffing. It, it was crazy. So then I, I celebrated the fact that I did a quarter mile because the difference is, is I could have just sat my fat ass in my bed and did nothing right. And stayed the same and probably died of a heart attack. Right. But then I went for another walk. And now granted this, when I started exercising, this was like a period of a month before I, I even decided to like get a gym membership. Right. So like, I'm like walking quarter mile. Then I, like I tried to walk a half a mile, then I did a mile. Right. And then we're slowly like incorporating, like doing push ups here and there where I can, you know, like, you know, like two push ups, three push ups. Let me hang on the pull up bar as long as I can. Right. Like, oh, I can only hang for two seconds, three seconds at a time. But like, if I was able to do three seconds instead of two seconds, then I would celebrate that. Right. Like, hell yeah, D. Good, good shit, bro. Let's see if we can go for four next time. Right. And being, being extremely grateful for the fact that I, that I was just making progress, that I'm, I'm moving away from the person that I didn't want to be any longer. Okay. So now adopting that mentality, I eventually ended up in the gym. All right. So this is important. I just want to say this as a disclaimer, because I know somebody's going to watch this and be like, I'm going to do exactly the same thing D did. Okay. So my workout is based on progressive overload mix with calisthenics and compound lifts. Okay. So what I mean by that is I would typically include squatting. All right. Just back squat. Um, deadlift and a vertical press. I didn't really get into bench pressing at all. Normally I would have like back in the day, but I was just like, nah, I'll just do a lot of pushups. Okay. So again, this is just what I decided to do for me. Now, what I did was when I got into the weight, cause normally, uh, back in my old days, I would try to put as much weight on the bar as possible to prove that I'm still valuable enough to, to be worthy of me criticizing myself. But this time I was like, no, we're going to start at the bar. That's it. I'm going to work on form. I'm going to work on technique. If you guys have never lifted weights before and you guys are going to do what I did, please get a coach so they can coach you through this because you could really hurt yourself doing lifts like these, especially if you once you guys start getting into heavier weight. Okay, please. I beg you. So what I did was um, I go into the gym and I I started with the bar, right? So I think I did the bar for like the first couple of weeks and just really trying to get my form and technique down. So I would, I would do my vertical press. And then what I would do is I would superset in between, right? So I do my ver three sets of, of five or well, three sets of three to five. So I do shoulder press and then I would try to do a pull up, right? Or just hang from the bar as long as I could. And then I would do push ups, right? And however many push ups I could do was just what I did. So if it, that was two push ups at the time, then I just did two push ups, right? And then I rested for a little bit. And then I came back and did another set of shoulder press, rinse, repeat. And then I hanged on the bar, you know, for as long as I could. And then, you know, I did push ups, right? And so then I would move into my squats, right? And I would do, I would just squat the bar, right? Then back, hang on the bar, right? For my pull ups and then my push ups. And I would just do this through all my sets of exercise, right? So three sets of five shoulder press, three sets of five squats, three sets of five uh, deadlift, right? And I would just superset all of my calisthenics in between. And then after that, I would just do some form of cardio, whatever cardio that works for you. So me, I used to box. So I did um, like, you know, shadow boxing and like some footwork and stuff like that. 
Um, and then, um, eventually that turned into just me doing sprints. Uh, so like, I, and then that was my workout for Monday. And then I just basically do the same thing Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Right. And, um, eventually I changed my workout style. So I added two rest days in between. Uh, but Monday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday, I pretty much do a total body and then I'm done. Now what happened over time is, and I'm talking over time. Okay. Is after a month right of doing that then i added a little bit more weight so now we're talking 10 pound barbells right um or 25 pound barbells not a lot of weight and i wanted to progressively work up now how this worked is as i was feeling myself get stronger i would test to see what i could do or couldn't do now, the purpose of this is since I was celebrating my little results, I wasn't overstressed about seeing the numbers go up, if you know what I'm saying. So for instance, let's say I was deadlifting the bar at 45 pounds and I put 65 pounds on there and I couldn't do it. I'm not going to push the envelope because the idea to me is I want the perfect form and I want to make sure that I'm still getting the gains without sacrificing my health. Because if I injure myself, then I'm out the gym and then I'm back to being a fat ass eating pizza. Right. And I think that as people, we under we overestimate what we can do in a week, but we underestimate what we can do in a year. So I just gave myself permission to celebrate my small victories. And it didn't matter if I felt like I could lift 400 pounds. I'm still staying at where I'm at with my little one to five percent gains every month. Right. And so over time, then once I felt confident in my technique, and my form, then we started to to. Stick with the rep scheme, but up the weight. So, uh, and then on my calisthenics, then I just change the exercise or I up the repetition scheme. So for example, when I noticed that I can hang on the bar for 30 seconds, then I attempted to do my first pull up. All of a sudden I'm like, damn, I can do a pull up. So now my exercise is like, okay, I do my shoulder press and now I can do a pull up, right? So I do my one pull up. And then I go right into my push-ups. If I can do five push-ups now, then I do five push-ups each set instead of just one or two, right? And then over time, obviously the numbers are going to go up. Now, as my workout evolved, then I've added more exercises in. So now I do bar dips um, and push-ups, right? So now I, um, you know, I, let's say I do my vertical press, then I'll do as many pull-ups as I can, um, you know, overhand grip, and then I'll go do my bar dips, right? Uh, you know, set of five or a set of 10, and then I'll come back and finish the set with like push-ups, like 15 push-ups, and then we'll do that. So when I started, I was doing like nine sets of like two push-ups, right? Now I'm doing nine sets of 15 push-ups, right? Nine sets of five to 10 dips, nine sets of four to six pull-ups. Um, but again, this is about being comfortable with time. And for me, I'm able to measure my progress by my rep increase over time and not and I guess my weight increase, but not to a place where I'm really trying to get to crazy heavy weight. Like I have no desire to lift anything over, you know, 300 pounds <laughs> at all. Like, so I, I, I stay in a very, very safe uh, weight rep scheme because again, I don't have a desire to lift any kind of crazy weight at all. And like, for me, I'm working towards getting towards a full calisthenic workout that includes like handstand pushups, muscle ups, uh, things like that, because that's, what's important to me. I don't care about bodybuilding. I don't, <laughs> I don't care about biceps curls or none of that. So for me, it's just a total, total body workout, compound movement. And then when I get done, uh, I do cardio, right? And again, I do this three times a week and that's it. And then the rest of the days are rest days. And, um, what I do in between is like, after I finish my workout, I'll just go for a walk. I, I go for a walk. And then there's like this little hill that I like to sprint and I'll do five sprints, uh, within like a five minute period just so I can, you know, keep my cardiovascular up. And then I hoof it. Now, after I got comfortable walking and sprinting, I've since added a rucksack. So I wear a 30 pound ruck anytime I'm out on the trails. And that does it for me. If I want to make increase the difficulty of my rucksack uh, marches, then I'll walk faster, <laughs> okay? Or I'll go longer. So when I started, I would only do a mile. Now I'm doing three to four miles with rucksack sprints in between. But this is something, again, that I had to work up to over time and give myself permission to give myself credit for the small gains that 
I made. Because for me, this is a lifestyle change. This is something that I'm going to do um, for the rest of my life, right? This is not something that I'm just here to, you know, get some girls and then be done. So I want to I wanna be proud of myself. And the biggest thing for me here is I've learned that confidence stems from keeping your word to yourself. It's not about discipline or setting any crazy amount of rules that you'll never be able to achieve. So you beat yourself up about it. It's about saying, this is how many times I'm going to go to the gym this week. And then you go to the gym that many times. It doesn't matter what time you go. It doesn't matter how it happens. You just get your ass there and you take care of business. That's it. And what I found over time is like, when I started hell, even now, I'll have days where I go to the gym and I'll be there and I will literally stare at the weight for 40 minutes because I don't want to work out. And the crazy thing is now it's okay for me to be a little sissy sometimes. I understand that there are days that I don't want to do it. There are days that I want to procrastinate, that I don't want to work out, that I don't feel like it, and that's okay. So what I do now is when I'm at the gym and I have days like that, I literally am patient and empathetic with myself. I sit down, I listen to myself, I let myself rant in my head. Oh, I don't want to work out. My ankle hurts, my toenail hurts, uh, you know, my, my hairline is receding further, <laughs> whatever. And I just listen to myself for as long as it takes for my brain to just shut up. And then once my brain shuts up, we go to work. That's it. And I found that, you know, getting used to the consistency is the kicker because that's how you develop the habit. Because then you'll get used to talking crazy to yourself or making excuses for yourself. And the funny thing is this is going to transcend and spread into other areas of your life. And so I've noticed that I was so depressed and so unhappy with my life before because I wasn't keeping my word to myself. I wasn't putting myself first. I wasn't taking care of me. And now that I'm taking care of me, all of a sudden, other things in life seem to be a little bit easier to handle. So now that we got that out of the way, let's get into diet. Now this one is, this part is going to be pretty short and sweet guys. I really didn't eat anything crazy. My diet was pretty much the same. Um, as I told you before, I started with carnivore. The reason why I stopped doing carnivore was after about four to six weeks into the gym, I started cramping really bad, like really bad. Like I would wake up in the morning and my feet would be cramping. And so I try to stretch them out and then my calves would cramp and then my thighs, uh, both my hamstrings and my quadriceps. And then if I sneeze, like my abs would cramp, like it, it was just too much. So what I did was I, I did some research into it and found out that a lot of times, especially if you aren't eating enough potassium, vitamin C, you know, all, you know, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, cramps happen. So what I did was I re-implemented fruit back into my diet. So what I do now is I still eat all the meats and cheeses and all that stuff that, you know, I've been doing. Um, but I definitely re-implemented carbohydrates. So my diet now is more of a keto based, but there's specific fruits that I eat. So I stuck to pineapples. I tried mangoes. I hated my life, but I do pineapples. I do kiwis, strawberries, uh, all forms of berries and sometimes watermelon. Um, and I've noticed that eating the fruit, like it's great because I don't really get that insulin high that you would get. Like when you eat like a Snickers bar, or like a large ass pizza, um, so I've been doing that consistent. So, you know, I'll eat like a pound or two of meat a day or some cheese in there and stuff, maybe some sour cream here and there. Um, and then I just throw in some fruits, bananas, berries, uh, you know, pineapples, you know, all that good jazz. And, uh, that's, that's just where I've been. Don't get me wrong. There have been some days that I freaking hated, uh, having to like scarf down some ground beef or whatever. I try to keep the variety as much as I can. Um, but that's where I'm at. Um, I don't do any crazy macro counting or anything like that. Um, I just make sure that I don't really eat any refined carbohydrates at all. I did have a cheat week when I was in Colombia. Um, I had pasta. It was great. I had some rice. It was not that great. <laughs> but when I came back from vacation, I, I've been right back on. So um, it's kind of crazy how much weight your body holds, uh, you know, when you have carbohydrates in it and you just retain water. I literally like after I cut out the carbs again and just went back to like my fruit and meat thing, I literally lost like 12 pounds within like a day and a half. It was nuts. Uh, <laughs> it was probably just a whole water weight. So I wanted to take a bit of time guys and honestly just come from the heart and just share with you guys my experience with this fitness journey. 
Um, it's been crazy. Uh, obviously, we're still going to continue. I still got quite a few more pounds that I want to lose before you know I get to my ideal weight. And uh, also understand, guys, that goals change. Things change as you go through this. You'll learn a lot about yourself. I've learned a lot about myself in this whole process more than I ever thought that I knew because when I was younger, I thought I knew everything, right? And I thought that by now, by the time I'm 37, I'm supposed to know everything. But I don't know shit. I don't, I don't know anything, <laughs> okay? So be understanding with yourself. Give yourself credit. Understand that it's a process and the credit goes to you for actually deciding to get up and do something different. It doesn't matter if it's only a little bit today, right? Or tomorrow or the next day, as long as it's consistent, because that little bit over time is going to add up. And even if it doesn't seem like it's working right now and you feel like you're drowning right now because you can't see the results, just trust that as long as you keep doing what you got to do. It's going to work out. And and let me be the living, you know, testament, the living, you know, the living truth, the the, the evidence that it can work. If, if, if you feel like you're not seeing results, just rewind my videos back to six months ago and look at my fat ass. All right. Just laugh at me. Look at my my beard that wasn't lined up with my hairline and, and my big old belly and my four necks. My mom literally said to me, son, you don't have four necks anymore. Wow. Thanks, mom. So. Listen, man, I love you guys. I want you guys to have the best that you want for you in life, whatever that looks like to you. So please get out there. Let's get it, baby. Uh, if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know in the comment box below and I'd be happy to assist. And uh, with that being said, we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.